So with that, let me introduce our video that I think tells the story of Bridges to Breakthroughs far better than I can tell it uh, from this podium. My daughter Taylor, when she was diagnosed at the age of seven with seal and one batten disease, the geneticist said, there is nothing you can do. I knew that I had a new goal in life. If I couldn't help my own child, there had to be an answer for families and children who would follow my own. Science has the power to cure, but no single organization can do that alone. At FNIH, we build bridges to breakthroughs by forging teams of the very best scientists at NIH, in academia, and across the biopharmaceutical ecosystem. Through the public-private partnerships, we accelerate the creation of new diagnostics, therapies, and potential cures. FNIH has been charged by Congress to really fill a gap in the ecosystem of innovation. Before FNIH, it was really difficult to establish collaborative efforts uh, between public and private sectors. FNIH brings its own special expertise to putting these together in a way that can really be productive. The FNIH is the consummate convener. And that means bringing together the best science and technology, outstanding people who use their combined expertise and ambition to accelerate progress for patients. The more hands you have on deck, the more likely you are to answer these vexing problems. We bring together the resources, we provide the infrastructure, and really form that bridge to the breakthrough. At FNIH, we support team science aimed at solving some of the toughest biomedical challenges. Since our inception, we've raised more than a billion and a half dollars to support the mission of the NIH and have deployed those funds for programs like Accelerating Medicines Partnership and the Biomarkers Consortium. These programs bring treatments and most importantly hope to people living with cancer, neurologic disease, rare genetic disorders, and other seemingly incurable health conditions. With every partnership we foster, we're seeking to accelerate scientific innovation so that we can realize global health equity in our lifetime. We're working with NIH, the Gates Foundation, and many other partners on some of the grand challenges in global health, like maternal mortality, malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS. The discoveries that happen through FNIH affect the health of everyone in the world. These breakthroughs wouldn't happen without world-class scientists. That's why we take time to honor the creative investigators who are pushing the boundaries of possibility with awards like the Lurie Prize in Biomedical Science and Trailblazer Prize. The FNIH has supported nearly 25,000 scientists over the last 25 years with training programs, fellowships, and awards. Our partners at NIH and the academicians they fund make discoveries in their laboratories. Our partners in life science companies discover and develop medicines for patients. FNIH builds the bridge from the bench to the bedside and reduces the time it takes to bring these promising therapeutics to patients who can't wait. Taylor lived almost 13 years with her diagnosis. I want mothers that follow me to have more. The FNIH is running a great race on behalf of people like my daughter. I know of no other organization in the world that could do this the way that FNIH does. But we can't do this alone. We need your support. So please join us in building bridges to breakthroughs. Patients everywhere are waiting. Thank you. I feel inspired every time I watch this video, and I really want to thank David Carmel and the communications team uh, and their um, support efforts to really not just modernize our website, but to really build the stories that we need to tell about the important work that goes on in this organization. So um, if you want to log into our website at fnh.org, you will see many other examples of stories that I think you'll find equally inspiring. 
we did have a great year, and I don't have time to talk about all the highlights, but I want to just make a couple of comments. February was incredibly exciting to a whole community of people who care about maternal health. Uh, because the New England Journal published the A-plus initiative, which was led by NIH's uh, Eunice Shri Kennedy Shriver National Institute for Child Health and Human Development. The study showed that a single dose of an antibiotic, azithromycin, given during labor could reduce the risk of maternal sepsis, life-threatening infection, by 35%. This is an amazing intervention for women in the developing world, and when this drug becomes widely available, uh, it is a generic, it's very inexpensive, and this will save lives of many, many mothers um, around the world. In May, we mar marked the announcement of the eight first diseases that were selected for gene therapy in our Bespoke Gene Therapy Consortium. This is an initiative that hopefully will bring hope to many families, but in addition will help us understand what are the good manufacturing practices for creating gene vectors and what are the regulatory pathways that will help achieve approval of these promising therapies even when we can't uh, do randomized phase three controlled clinical studies because there simply aren't enough patients with rare disease to populate the study. In June, we began a project to explore the use of gene therapy that will actually cure sickle cell disease, an approach that hopefully will eventually be helpful to the people in the underserved areas of the world who are most likely to have sickle cell disease. This approach also holds promise, we hope, to be able to do the same someday for HIV. This year, we also welcome two wonderful new members to our board, Jay Bradner, who was the president of the Novartis Institute for Biomedical Research and who is a practicing physician scientist at um, the Boston Medical Centers, and Jim Weiss, who is the founder and chairman of Real Chemistry, an important firm that has a great deal of engagement from a communications perspective with the life sciences industry. Both Jay and Jim bring a wealth of knowledge and experience to our board, and we welcome them and also thank Steve Paul, our board chair, and all our other wonderful board members for their wise counsel. Their, their support means everything, and they are very actively engaged in our success. We also have some things to look forward to in 2024. We will be launching yet another Accelerating Medicines Partnership. This one is focused on ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease, which many of you know is a fatal neurodegenerative disease for which there currently exists no cure. And in February, we're going to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the collection of these programs with a two-day summit here in Washington, D.C. And in May, thanks to a former board member, Joel Marcus, we will convene at the Alexandria Center for Life Sciences in New York City for our first ever Team Science Day when we bring together our NIH colleagues, our other scientific partners, and other stakeholders to hear about our science and to get updated on the state of the art. We will be including many stakeholders, but also the science media in this event. So, I really hope that you get the impression, or you, you're, I'm building the impression here, that we truly are committed to building bridges, and we aim to be exemplars in supporting team science at its best. For everyone who sponsored this event and the science that underpins it, we thank you 